Thank so you. good evening, everyone. Uh, it is uh, four o'clock Middlesex time, no. five o'clock <laughs> real time. Uh, we'll go with the real time, and I will uh, call our meeting to order this evening. Good evening. Um, we have on the Zoom, it looks like John Eudis. Who else have we got over there? Do we have Deputy Chief Joseph Aldsworth, um, iPad 6, whoever that is, Orca Media, and Sarah Lipton from the Montpelier Senior. Okay, thank you. And here in the room with us, in addition to the select board, we have uh, Dorinda, the town treasurer. We have Erica Road Foreman. And would you, ladies and gentlemen, introduce yourselves, please? Uh, Stephen Dennis. Yeah. Amanda Bodwin. Okay. You see her name? Oh, sorry, Blanche, of course. Okay. <laughs> Shall well, we just start in? Yeah. Hi. Um, the first item on our uh, agenda tonight, and to those who are on the on the Zoom, I will try and uh, see you if you raise your hand or indicate some sign that you're looking to speak, but uh, if we don't, if I don't, if I fail, just uh, just speak up and I'll recognize you. So depending on how many we keep a, people we get, the images on the screen get smaller and smaller. Um, so the first item on our agenda tonight is approving the minutes of the March 14th special select board meeting action likely and reviewing and amending and approving the agenda for uh, March 21, we'll get to that. Uh, so we need to approve the minutes of uh, March 14th. Is there a motion? Peter, can mm -hmm. I ask, because I um, inadvertently left off the last like five, 10 minutes of the select board meeting in my notes. Okay. I'd like you to pass over that tonight so I can redo them. And then- Oh, pass over the minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we will pass over uh, minutes. Does that mean we don't discuss anything that was in the minutes? And I would bring it up as new business. I, I, it's up to you guys, but I think that the minutes should reflect what happened in the last meeting. And if you want to readdress it in this meeting, okay. it would be a readdress. Okay, but it wouldn't be until later. It would be in today's minute. Today's right. The minutes for today's today. meeting. Yeah, minutes for today's, but it wouldn't come up until down here. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. No problem with that. Thanks. So we will deal with that. And uh, we do have amendments uh, for tonight's agenda. Uh, we have energy code discussion right after the treasurer's report at approximately 5.50. And I guess we have a driveway uh, permit for other business. And then we also need to appoint one more member to the budget committee. Yeah. Um, and there's paperwork to be signed from the planning commission for a grant. Okay. So that doesn't so need to be signed. It can all come under, under, the under other business. business. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Peter? Yes. Uh, just if I could have three minutes around green up day. Sure. On what? Green, green, green up. Oh. Would you like to do that right now, John, and get it off your chest? Then you don't have to sit around for the rest of the <laughs> rest of the meeting. It's up to you. Uh, sure that, that, if that works for you, I'm I'm ready. Yeah. We try and okay, we try so, for your time. Thank you. All right. Appreciate that. Um, so in the past. Uh, green, I'm the green up coordinator. Been doing it. This is my third year. Uh, the last couple of years, uh, the pickup spot has been at the at the firehouse near Rumney. We've used the town uh, dump truck, which requires the people, the conservation commission who staffs it, to climb up on a ladder and throw the trash in there. Most of the people on the conservation commission are not youngsters. Um, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's a accident waiting to happen. Um, I approached uh, Kate Abogini, who's the Green Up, Executive Director of Green Up Diana, former Middlesex resident, uh, to see what some of the options might be. Casella offers a sort of a Green Up deal um, for a drop off dumpster. Uh, which would alleviate not having to use a dump truck and a ladder. The price for that is it's uh, 
$110 for it to be delivered, $195 for them to pick it up, and then it's $125 per ton. So you're looking at a minimum of $305 plus whatever the, the tonnage is. Uh, we already paid that. Um, so I, I guess I'm asking uh, if the town would uh, ap approve that. Uh, the other part of it would be that we collect tires on Green Up Day. I'm not exactly sure what we pay for that. I, uh, in the past, the, the, the disposal fee, Casella told me that when we do it uh, basically per tire or $12 per tire with a rim, if we were to get another roll off just for tires, again, it'd be 300 bucks uh, for the delivery and pickup, and then it's $200 per ton. Um, so the priority is clearly around the trash. And if you're willing to do the tires, that would be great too. Uh, we're always very appreciative of, of the road crew who, who ends up dealing, dealing with this. Questions? So John, isn't the way we've done it in the past is that people just stack up the tires and then the road crew comes with a bucket loader and puts them in the truck and hauls them away? It does. I would think that's the yes. way you do it. You don't need a dumpster for the tires. That, that, I mean, my, yeah, I, th okay. I, think that, I think that works fine unless you disagree. I mean, it, it's going to be actually safer for people I don't, to, try to try and hoist them up into the dumpster. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't, you know, the, it, it, it's fine. I don't have any objection to that. It, I asked Sarah what we did in the past for the tire disposals. Um, and, you know, I, I, I guess she's not back yet. So I, I don't know what, what, what we've been paying uh, uh, for that. But it's fine with, it's absolutely fine. Uh, we collect a fair number of tires. Um, but if, if the will of the select board is to go with just with the trash dumpster, that's, that's good too. And I will move forward once, once I get the official okay from, from you folks. Okay, so what, just to, uh, just to reiterate, the cost would be $110 to deliver, $195 to pick up. So that's $305 and the per ton cost would be the same either way. Yes, it's 125 per ton. Right, 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 right. But we're, we're paying that. We're on the hook for that already. I yes, that, that, that may be a reduced rate um, because they, they give, when you do it through Green Update, they give you a deal, I think. But again, I don't know exactly what we've paid in the past. Uh, the bills go directly to Sarah willing to say that they probably give the town the green up rate on green up day, but maybe they don't, I don't know. So maybe, maybe we're, maybe we're saving a little money doing it this way, but it's no more expensive. How about that? I would think so, that's correct. Okay. Uh, Vic, do you know? No. Yeah. We normally, somebody applies for a grant from the state and we'll get a $500 grant every year to put towards cleaning up. And then anything that comes in over and above the $500, the town also budgets $500, I think, or it has been 500. I think that's what they did this year too. And- Did you? Um, okay. And that covers any overage. I think last time it came in like at $800 or something like that. So the 500, we had the 500 from the grant yep. that covered the first 500, and then we paid like 300. Do you know who did the grant? Was it, it the grant was committee? Whoever, um, his son. You know about that, John? Who was doing I do that? not know about that. I know that. Sorry, right, John. That's okay. Well, would you yeah, make I don't know who did it that because we don't know who it is either. Sarah probably knows because it's the same person yeah. that you know. yeah. it was a woman, I think. Does that ring a bell? 
Wasn't Mitch who did it? Yeah, was it Grant Mitch Mitchell? the last time? Somebody did it. It, makes yeah. sense. Mitch. I think it, Mitch, it might have been Mitch. I don't know. Well, John, just to uh, well, I can. I'll, I'll Mitch, and if not, Sarah will be back when. Yes. Next week. Yeah, next week. Yeah. So it looks like the conservation commission. Okay. Just for the green up. Yeah. Well, it doesn't say green up specifically. No, I think it's it just says conservation commission and there's the the cut. Okay. We well, the sponsor it, but we've never, as far as I know, I'm on the conservation commission. As far as I know, in the three years. The Conservation Commission has has not been the person or the entity that that's applied for that grant, as far as I know. But it sure. probably was Mitch, or maybe or maybe Sarah. It was the chair, whoever was chairing the Green Up Committee, or something, or was in charge of the Green Up. I thought, but um, we've the the budget item is under Highway in Modern yeah. Conservation. Yeah, under Summer. Yeah. Yeah. So the question for tonight is, um, will the select board agree to expend uh, up to $305 for a dumpster versus using our truck? And the only other comment I would make is I agree. I, I served duty several years ago on that ladder going up and down and throwing stuff in the, in the truck. It's a sketchy proposition. Um, if we had a bunch of young kids there, it'd be one thing. So I do think it's a safety issue. I also think, you know, not that it's a big number, but it'll save a little wear and tear on our truck because Casella will come and pick it up and dispose of it. Yes. I would volunteer to save the town money and I will run everything up and down the ladder. Oh, oh. well. She did it for me last year. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will spend the entire day running stuff up and down that ladder if need be. What what say you to that, John? Um, hey, you know, if if, if I, I don't know what what, what this individual gentleman's name is, I mean that's that's a very nice offer. It, it's a lot of work, um, and and it will. I mean, in the future, we've got to deal with this issue. Um, but you yeah, know, it's up to the select board. Ladies and gentlemen, what's your pleasure? Um, well, I think it's a great offer. I think my only concern is what happens if, like, he's sick or something, and then we don't well, have to I haven't had a fever in 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. It's a, great, it's a great and generous offer. I think uh, I can do it all. Recording in progress. Uh oh. Then, okay. I, I, okay. I think there's other good work that you could do on Green Up Day if you're interested in volunteering on Green Up Day. I just, I just think we need to have a safe, planned approach to dealing with this problem. And if whether it was you, unlikely, or right. me, the way more right. likely, who fell off that ladder, it would be, uh, but like it would be oh, yeah. bad. Thought, no, but yeah. how, do, how do the rest of you feel about that? I mean, if it's under 100 pounds, I can probably just chuck it up and not even have to climb the ladder, honestly. I, I appreciate your offer. <laughs> I really do. Um, I mean, I think it will go with what John is saying, because it sounds like it's more or less going to be the same price. But, you know, I think that they're going to need help. They, are, they always have somebody there all day, right? And helping with stuff like that regardless, right? It's like tires yeah. getting far. No, we, so. we, you know, Conservation Commission staffs it. We make sure that, you know, I mean, people bring things that we're not supposed to accept and we, we, we deal with that. Um, and, but, but I don't know, the gentleman who offered, there are a lot of things that you could help us with if, if you were willing, uh, besides, okay. besides that. It, it's, that would be much appreciated. Okay. I will commit to the entire day, regardless of what your decision is. Thank you. That's awesome. Man. What what day is the event? Saturday, May uh, May. It's the first Saturday in May, and it is May. Let me look. It's May sixth, and we typically staff the drop off site um, from nine nine to three. Um, 
So I, I just have a follow-up question regarding the tires. You had mentioned a separate a separate uh, drop for tires. How do we deal with that? Normally, it sounded like there was, you know, the bucket loader. Uh, they were loaded into that, and they I were assume so dropped I mean, into here, the how, dump truck. Right. How are they recycled? They go dump them. We bring them to the drip, the dump off station and dump it in a separate in a separate trip from the trash and all that. So the vision here is that if we move forward with the drop off, the roll off, that would be handled by Casella. The town would load the tires into the dump truck and take that in a separate trip. Right. Okay. That makes sense. So is that a motion, Liz? Yeah, I'll move that we support John's request. Okay. Or is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Okay, thank you. All those in favor of the motion to uh, agree to spend $305 to supply a dumpster for trash on Green Up Day at the uh, Old Town Garage. Hold on, I oh. think it could be more, because couldn't it be more than a ton of garbage? Yeah, but we pay that anyway. We're just authorized. Okay. We've, already authorized. Got, we've already got a budget okay. additional expenses, 305. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? You're all set, John. You used a little more than your allotted time. Well, thank well, you very much. <laughs> Have a good evening. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care. Considering the Montpelier Senior Activity Request for funding after failing to submit a petition to appear on the March 7th Annual Town Meeting Day warning requesting funding. So do we have a letter from them? Uh, we have uh, someone from the Senior Center saying that um, like you can speak yeah. to it, Sarah Lipton. Yes. Yeah. Hi, good evening. Thank you so much for letting me join you this evening. I'm Sarah Lipton. I'm the director at the Montpelier Senior Activity Center. I'm still somewhat new to my role and I wanted to explain what happened um, and why we missed our deadline. Um, having this being my first time through the uh, ringer of town funding processes, um, we had all of our materials ready for you, but at the last minute um, I learned from the city that because we were because we're part of the municipality of the city of Montpelier, um, because we were receiving a an increase in FY24, there's a city policy that says I have to then ask for an increase from surrounding towns. But that meant that I would need to get petitions together, and I did not have enough time or volunteer support at that time to get those petitions ready. And so that's. Also, I got sick at the time. So it was a whole confluence of annoying events. That means I did not um, get our submission in time with the petitions. We have been um, working really hard to address this issue on the advisory council and with our um, various members and have a really solid plan for next year so this doesn't happen again. But in the meantime, it does leave us in a lurch for our, um, our budget for FY24. And I'm sure you're aware to some degree of what the Senior Activity Center does. We have so many classes, uh, over 50 classes every semester, four semesters a year, drop-in groups for older adults, meals that we provide both in-person and home-delivered. And we do have some home-delivered clients in Middlesex, actually, sort of have a like a corner of Middlesex that we serve through our Meals on Wheels program. And I'm not sure how familiar you are with Meals on Wheels, but it is providing more than just a vital nutrition to older adults, but it's also a really necessary wellness check. A lot of our older adults who live in Middlesex, Berlin, et cetera, are very rural and really don't have anyone else checking on them. And so it's our Meals on Wheels drivers delivery that actually gives them that moment for an opportunity to be checked on. So. We're concerned that not having funding from Middlesex will not only hamper our ability to serve the necessary meals to your residents, but also make it difficult for us to serve Middlesex residents through our classes and all of our other events. Um, and I, again, I know that we're, we weren't on the, you know, we weren't on the warning and we weren't able to be part of the ballot process, but we've been receiving funding from Middlesex for many years um, and pretty statically at about $7,000 for the last three or four years. Um, and I just wanted to see basically if there was any way you would consider finding some kind of funding 
for us in FY24. I did meet with um, the town of Berlin's select board yesterday. They were very encouraging about helping to see if they could find funding for us because we also missed their uh, timeline. And they wanted to know what you were going to decide, so I'm going to report back to them um, from this conversation. So, I, and I can report back to you after I talk to them. So, you know, I can go back and forth, which is just fine. Um, and I am really sorry to cause more work for you all, but I. What would your request be? What's that? What, what would the request be? Um, if you have the ability to offer level funding, which was seven thousand. Seven thousand. Seven thousand. Yep. So I'm sure you probably heard this from Berlin too. We value your services to our community. Yeah. The problem is the money's not in our budget now. So we have to find it. And $7,000 is a big hole for us as well as a big hole for you. I know. So yeah. I don't know. I have no idea if we can find somewhere to get a grant to cover that shortfall or what we can do. Um, Give us a little. Give us a little time to uh, yeah. to think about this and see what we can come up with. That would be our virtually our entire select board contingency fund if we uh, if we chose to give it to you. Give it to you, and I'm reluctant to do that. And it's sure. not we don't value your value your program. We do, um, but we try and be consistent and apply the same rules to everyone. Obviously, yeah, I understand that. And if there's anything else that we can offer, or you know, if you if it would be helpful for us to provide more of a presentation or share more of our services or I don't know, put on an event for you or, you know, whatever it was. I mean, we, we have an incredible let us, kitchen. Let us see what, if anything, we can, we yeah. can come up with. I think we're all well aware and I think our citizens are well aware of, of the services and we know many of our citizens use your, yeah. use your program. So that isn't the issue at all. I'm, okay. Pretty darn sure if you've been on the ballot, it would have been approved. But yeah. just yeah. once the budget's approved, I know it's a challenge for us. The money doesn't doesn't rain down from the trees, as you uh, as you well know. And I, just have, I just have a question, Sarah. Do the people, um, this is Liz Sharp. Do the people um, from Middlesex pay to be members all, anyway, regardless to be? And are you saying that if we weren't able to fund, you'd have to in possibly increase the membership yes. cost for Middlesex people. Is that Definitely, important? yeah. So we have um, our um, Montpelier resident uh, fee for membership is $25. Supporting town uh, fee is $40 and anyone else is $60. So we would have to bump that price for uh, Middlesex members to $60. And we are under review about right now we're in the middle of a review around our membership pricing anyway we're getting ready for our may membership renewal process and it's likely that those prices will shift a little bit anyway but there definitely would have to be an increased ask to middlesex residents there's also um, a different pricing uh, structure for our classes so uh, msec members pay a certain rate and non-members pay a higher rate surrounding town members pay sometimes a different rate as well so and that that would be supporting towns so yes there there's a number of ways that this would affect your membership and obviously it affects us as well and do you have a list or do you have a count of how many middlesex people use our services or how many services they use that kind of thing I do, yeah. So, um, and it's it's gone down over the years, probably because of the pandemic. Um, you know, in FY 2019, we had 75 Middlesex residents involved as members and taking classes. Last year, FY 22, it was down to 68, and this past year, FY 23, it's down to 34. Um, part of that is reflective of the fact that we haven't done our membership renewal yet. That's coming in May. So the numbers are a little skewy, but um, but there has been a, a, a slow downtrend that we're working to address and shift. But um, there's at least, I know of one for sure, and I think there's maybe three Middlesex residents that are receiving our meals right now. And we also have Middlesex residents that come for our congregate meals and sometimes to the curbside pickup meals too. So there's, there's multiple ways. You know, we also, um, we have our tax clinic, 
that I think we have a couple of Middlesex residents coming to, um, which is a free service through AARP. Um, and we've got a number of other clinics and other events that we offer that your folks are coming to. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, um, we will take this under consideration. We'll get back to you. I mean, we, we literally have to figure out some way to find the money. I mean, I'm just, just thinking while we're sitting here talking, maybe we could agree to, you know, subsidize our residents who want to participate in the in the programs there as a stopgap thing. I just I don't know where we're going to find seven thousand dollars, and I don't know of any grants that are available. Are you aware of any grants that are available? Well, we're applying to grants left and right. Um, I've just submitted three applications in the last two weeks. I'm working on another four right now. None of them are, well, one of them is specifically to support membership. Um, but yeah, we're constantly doing grant fundraising. Well, if you were if you were aware of any organizations who might fund us to fund you, yeah. that would be helpful to have. Yeah, I'll take that to my team. That's a great idea that we had not considered. So I will take that to the team. Okay. I, I suspect there might be something out there. So I will let okay. you know. Do you have, um, is that something that you would need us to write on your behalf and then you submit? Or is that something you have someone on your team or select board that could write? Just so I'm clear. If you do have any funding sources, you could just tell us and then we yeah. can figure out like what we next can figure steps out to take. Door. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate that idea. That hadn't even right. occurred to me. Thank, Thank you so much. I really, I really, on oh, behalf Lord. of all of our members, we really appreciate your consideration. Okay. Yeah. Sarah, Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Take care. Thanks. Highway report. Yes. We uh, we've got our new truck back. Um, it had to go out for repairs. The radiator sprung a leak. Um, our freight liner is in need of repairs um, continuously, uh, which brings me to the question, we might want to consider um, unloading that for something else sooner than later before it costs us way too much money. Um, I've called around. Uh, there are some options for us uh, if we choose to do something, um, certainly, something that's going to take some consideration. Um, there is a new truck that's available right at the moment. Uh, there is possibly a used one coming down the pike, but I'm a little nervous for that one, just because of the age and the issues that have been going on with it. So what year is our front liner? 19. 2019. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, it, we've got a transfer case issue with it that is, yeah, we discussed that the last time. Yeah. Trying, but now we, um, you've got the uh, plow frame that's broken again. Um, front end? The ball joints are, are bad on it. Um, rust? Yeah, rust. So just to be clear, and I'm going back in my memory banks, we bought this truck because we had such bad luck with one ton trucks. Mm -hmm. right. And we thought this would be better. Right. How much was this truck? 230? No, I, don't, I don't know. The price. That's what you told me this afternoon. That that was the that was the price of the new truck. I have the replacement cost of the freight liner estimated at uh, one hundred eighty five thousand. According so to probably CIP, what they according to what for. the CIP was carrying for roughly that must have been what they paid for it. I, I didn't. Know, I don't know. It's some sort of inflationary value, and it looks like it's estimated replacement right now is projected in twenty twenty seven. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I don't foresee it lasting that long. Was that? I don't. I don't mean to be contrary, but then wasn't that uh, the international? Wasn't that two hundred four? I know the new truck they that is available is two hundred four. Right. And that is a seven yard single axle dump truck with a plow, with a plow and wing. Also. The reason we're getting it is because somebody backed out, otherwise, we'd have to wait for it. Mm -hmm. It's one that a municipality ordered it and they decided to go with a tandem axle. So they're right. back out of the deal. But just to give you some idea, what's it, how much was the freight liner when we bought it? Didn't you? 
I don't know what the Freightliner was. Okay. I know what the Kenworth was. The Kenworth was 230. Okay. 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 To give My some bad. perspective of what the prices are. Well, thanks for the good news, as I said. <laughs> I don't have any good news. Usually. What did you say you think you could get for it? You didn't get it. Oh, I don't know. No, no, no. I know that the new one is 204. There is a used one coming down the pipe. It's a 2015 with 60 some odd thousand miles on it. But it's been, it's had recently, it's had about $12,000 worth of repairs done with for the year. I mean, that's the four years. You're probably buying somebody else's problem. Oh, that's my, that that's how it's four years older than the one that we've got. Yeah. That's my point. Could have been better. Than so, and, and you know, that's good information to have. We need to think about it. That's, mm -hmm. that's exactly why we're changing around, potentially changing around this equipment. But we're already about to buy one great big new truck. Yeah, next year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah next year. Yeah, I know. Because we've got this, but we pulled off on the one next year, and I... I wouldn't want to push that one too far out, just because of the eighteen hundred actual. Yeah. Well, here's, I mean, here's the question for me, and and I hate the repairs, but you know, where are the lines? Where are the lines cross? As they say, are we better off with the truck? How many miles are on the truck we have? Twenty six. Yeah, I don't, it, doesn't, it. it doesn't have many miles, but it's totally rusted out. Yeah. I mean, How could that be? Because it, it wasn't washed, and it was a chloride truck for a while. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, could you say that again? It wasn't washed on a regular basis, and it, it was a chloride truck for a while. In the way we it. used it. We used it. We misused it, is what you're saying. Right. We had to what we didn't make sure that we washed the chloride off it. What's that? Because we did not clean the chloride off it. So who's okay. gonna to want to buy a rusted truck? That's exactly what we're thinking. Right. Yes, sir. Um I was just wondering if anybody uh at the town level has been looking into and or applying for the federal infrastructure budget grants that are available because I've done a minimal amount of research but I have seen multiple grants that a replacement truck could possibly be covered under that federal I grant. haven't seen that one, and I've looked. I, my, I spoke to Sarah, and she said to bring it up. Okay. So, so there. So that's there. good. I, I just so haven't the, seen So it. The, the way the budgets are working is they're annually enrolling, right? So last year's deadline was September. Mm -hmm. This year's deadline, again, will be either sometime at the end of September or October, but they haven't put out the entirety of the budget. Federal? It's a federal, and they haven't posted the entire schedule yet, but it's supposed to be just rolling from 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026. So they should be, when they get the, the schedule out that far, we should see a deadline for that application for the same grant as last year, this mm -hmm. year, next year, and the year after, and we should be keeping an eye out for those. Yeah, for, no, I for didn't know that one's there. I, I've been looking there. I think you see it. Because on the, on the, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's that one. Yeah. yeah. And, but so there's like, there's a bunch of them. Like, there's one for rural uh, uh, connectivity infrastructure. Like, we could apply for a grant to bring internet to the parts of the town that don't have it. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of them, but it's a rolling uh, annual budget. So basically, they, get, they, they put it on the schedule. This is the window to apply. This is your deadline. And that's it. But it's, it's rolling for the next three years. Good to know. I'll have to find that. Grant it's, it's, it's not current. The application is, I believe so. Yeah, you can find it on there, but it, the app, grants.gov, grants um, the application isn't currently open right now because it's not on the schedule. They're like, with how many at the federal level, they basically give you a window yeah. and you just got to keep an eye on the schedule to apply for it. So that apply to fire equipment also? You know, there's, there's all kinds of them all year. Um, it's not just the infrastructure budget, but there's well, we it's, it's for fire any. Fire any I thought I, I thought I saw your your head uh, there's, nodding over there, Jeff. <laughs> there's literally tens of thousands of grants at the federal level that qualify every year, and they just come up and they're available, and you just got to keep an eye out for the window of application. The the fire ones that we've dealt with in the past were for primary engines. Mm -hmm. If you're not applying for a primary engine, you're not getting it. I don't know. I don't remember what it's for, but there is one for. I want to say it's wildfire prevention right now, 
Yeah, they have those come out already. They have sales like 50% off. It's for the water bags. Well, no, the for, the, for the actual infrastructure budget that they passed that like $900 billion budget, they have a uh, grant that you can apply out of that at the federal level for wildfire prevention right now. Yeah. That okay. one I know the application is open currently. Is it just for prevention stuff or is it for equipment? It's for like anything that encompasses the prevention of wildfire equipment, like gear, whatever you need. Because a wildland fire annually has equipment up that you can apply for, but it's we don't need any of it. We've gotten it. We don't need any. Buying new bags each year doesn't do us any good. Fair enough. Well, thank you. That's good information. Well, bad news. Good news. I'm good at bringing it. Good news. Good news. But I mean, it does point out once again, and I know we're doing a much better job, but we need to appropriately take care of our equipment. Absolutely. And when we yes. don't, this is what this is one That's of the consequences. Horrible. It's not that the transfer case has anything to do with that, but if it's all rusted out, that sounds like that could potentially be on us. Well, there was an undercoating issue with it when they first got it. And then remember, they had to take it back and get it. Yeah, now they're under coding. Did you get a warranty on it? No, there's no warranty on that no truck warranty. on anything that truck. Right. Yeah. I've tried. No. No, the people that were around then, well, except for five. Yes. Maybe. 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 Maybe try. But anyways. That's I wasn't there. I don't know that offhand, but that's what I've been told about the uh, yeah. So is it the body of the truck which is rusted out or the frame and the body? Frame mostly. Yeah. My really? my, my uh, understanding is that the problems that are having with the truck are have been problems in the past. Right. The All right. Not something that just happened last so week. It's it's been a consistent right. constant revolving issue. So just just one more question. So if we were to consider getting another truck. What do we get? We thought we were getting this truck because it would last longer, be better suited to our needs, and apparently it's not heavy enough. That's my opinion. Not heavy built enough. So can you get a single axle truck that's heavily built? Correct. We bought the wrong truck. Or we bought the wrong truck and then we failed to maintain it. I was I'm not, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand yeah. because the whole the whole reason to get that truck when it was a heavier duty or better suited to our needs, et cetera, et cetera. So chances are, if we were to get another truck, we need a heavier truck, which means more money. Well, is this one that you're looking at or looked at, is that a heavy enough truck? Yes. Yeah. Is that dealer willing to give us what our other truck is? I mean, would they look at it? And oh, I'm sure he probably would. would. I'm probably sure you would. So this, the price that, that I gave you, it does not reflect the uh, warranty that I would ask for, just so you were aware. That would be an extra cost. Yeah, we can send you the specs of that new that truck that he's talking about if you want. If you want to look at them or, or not, it's up to you. Sure, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to look. I just, I just want, for us all, when it comes especially to purchasing these big capital items to make sure we buy the equipment that's best suited for what, I agree. We, what we need. And we thought that's what we were doing and somehow we didn't uh, we didn't do it. So anyway, it's discouraging. Anything else on highways other than mud, can, snow, can we, ice? We want to talk about the uh, pay sheet. The pay sheet. We had a pay sheet last time. Oh. I, I think it's been resolved. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's that? Oh, sure. Does Sam have anything to add? Yeah, I was just going to wait till the end. Um, whatever. Well, I was just going to say that we got a we got a notification. I got a, I got an email late. Well, it was late for me last night. Showing a picture of Mead Road with a 
water, like a water bar cut across. I assume I didn't have anything to relate it to. Zach sent it to me and said that he did that because the water was running under the wood pile or something. We haven't looked at it. And then Sam texted or no, emailed me this afternoon and said if I was aware that there was, ex is, it, is it correct? You said excavation. I figure what you said exactly. Yeah, we have permission for alterations. To alterations, that. yeah. And we did not. We did not. But we, so once that. again, the same yeah. issue. We could have, the same issue we've been dealing with over and over and over again. Yes, it is. Yeah. So what do we do? Uh, block his driveway? Is there something that can be done to mitigate whatever the reason is that he's deciding to do this? Yes. Well, we what we were told by the Vermont State Police is that you have the ability to fine him for doing these unauthorized altercations. There's also been blocking, of, awesome. like barricading, blocking the actual road. So there's been multiple issues, and that's all I had brought up on August 16th in the meeting. And it's yep. the meeting yep. minutes yeah, where at that point you have said that where he was there and he was told to not do these things. Um, and then I had emailed Vic Dwyer on 8:31 because there was changes done, asking if he gave permission. There was not. On 920, I also emailed because there were changes done to the road to see if there was permission given, and there was not. And then yesterday. Right. There were not. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was. Uh, he told me about it last night. After but he didn't done. ask. He didn't ask. He just told me about it. Right. And I think the problem is he's got an excavator, and what he's done already is the road is slanting. He made the road slant because we don't maintain that road. So all the water is running road. to Sam's property. And looking and at all of the study the water laws to my property, and you can't impede or vandalize somebody else's property because normally, like something that that our road crew would do is they'd go down and there'd be a crown, and so there'd be water bars on each side, so it's kind of leveling off both properties. It wouldn't be a water bar going all to one person's property to flood it, and that's what's happening. So I purchased the property in 2014 and there was never any water bars or issues with this at all. I have had issues with my neighbor um, and this started after. So I think- So the just... bottom line is in addition to the other issues you've been having, he's diverting the water away from his property and onto your property. Yeah, he's yeah. altering the road. Like, um, you know, back in August was the speed bump, you know, and I, I took a picture of it. Um, but it's just, it wasn't necessary. None of us knew about it, so we hit it. Um, he, I hit it first. From he's, yeah. he's been, regardless of the town policy as well, he has been altering the grade and flow uh -huh. of the road, which is against state legislation. So, the neighbor, the Thank you. And this is an ongoing issue. And it is a town ordinance that he is breaking. And I would like to know what the town plans to do to uphold the ordinance. Is that what it looks like? It depends which time I've taken pictures. Either take time. Last night. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I know the highway ordinance says that any applicant, applicant that wishes to upgrade the class four road or any portion must apply to the select board, get a permit. And the budget landowners are should be notified. So that's the right. back and that's our ordinance. Well, we're gonna have to do some research and see. We have never in all the in all the years we have never uh, had the issue with ticket to anybody for anything like this. Well, I so know. whether we can whether we can get an injunction against him or or what we can do or what the well, procedure we, 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 we actually had to get the state police out. involved to get him to remove tractors that he was leaving parking and at the end there of the road blocking entry he to the put in the road um, but obstructing our way home so we went to the police station and the police specifically said it is the select board that needs to handle it they called him and had him remove it but they said i needed to bring it here and that he knows for a fact there you can escalate it to what it whatever it might be and he admitted so what it i will, what i will do is uh, tomorrow Sarah is Sarah is out of town. Our select board assistant. She'll be back next week. But before then, um, I'm going to contact our town attorney unless everyone disagrees and just get his take on what the. I also have what our potential features. resources. I wasn't prepared for this meeting. I just had got Vic's voicemail, and so I ended up just coming in. But I have 
I have pictures of each time where he has altered the road um, where there's like five runoffs and 51 feet and it's all flat. Um, I have him on video doing a runoff. And this is all on my property. That's the issue. I have him on video doing a runoff above a culvert that is on his side of the road. So that's just going to erode the road. And I'm, I'm no expert, but so digging a above a culvert. A culvert? No, no, it's, an it's an existing culvert that's on the road. And the water bar that he put in is literally over top of the culvert. That's, my side. that's one of them. But I have multiple pictures where I have measured it as well. Um, but it, it just keeps continuing. That's like if I were to go out and take a shovel like they did last night and do a runoff directing to their property, I wouldn't do that, but that's what's being done. So it's not just last night, Drew. This is no, not this, this, this this is ongoing. It's been like decades from August through mm -hmm. into September. Between okay. altering the road, blocking the road, and another thing that has happened is him putting him and or his wife putting political signs on my property that are in the town right of way. This all started because he was diverting a stream right onto our property and making trying to make it a wetland. Um, and I think the last meeting he said he maintained, actually, I plowed the whole road this year. My husband usually did, but I did a lot of tractor this year. And I think his brother, John, tried said, he does not maintain the road, I've been maintaining it so that they can get in and out for yeah. snow plowing. Okay. And I think that's the only thing they're supposed to do without permission, which yeah. If a select board authorizes the uh, road crew to do it, I mean, well, I think it used to be class four like once or twice a year that we break it. And that might be even it better since be. right now it goes like this instead of it was always flat. We've been up there since 62 and it was always flat. And it used to you be know, a class three down. road. Yeah. His mom actually changed it to a class four. Class four because it's back in the around. 70s. Yeah. Before my time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember. I, I remember. Uh, they lived up, they didn't live up well, it's, 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 you know, it, it, I, I realize that immediately it's your problem, but it's also our problem and we need to, we need to deal with it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't think, I don't think sending Victor down there to warn him is going to do any good. It hasn't done any good in the past. So we need to, whatever the next step is. And I don't really think, I, I don't know what the, what the fine could be or would be or, or any of that, but, um, uh, I'm not sure that's the answer either. So. We have to, wouldn't let me phrase this. Wouldn't we just wouldn't we write a letter? I don't know if you'd have your attorney write it, or wouldn't we write a letter saying stop? Well, cease and desist. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> certainly, certainly we can do that. I don't expect that to be very effective either. I mean, I I mean he's already been given verbal directive to whatever the whatever the teeth, whatever teeth, if any, that the town has. Yeah. Before we take another step, I want to understand and know what the teeth are so we can all agree that that's the appropriate action. Because I just don't see, I just don't see this gentleman changing his, uh, his Maybe, tune based on letters or verbal warnings. He never has in the past. He's never paid any attention to anything, as far as I know. And I mean, I'm willing to come because that's the last man I know to get the town lawyer's name and maybe get guidance from him. Well, no, no, I'm, I will, I don't you start calling the town attorney, I'll send you a bill. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm happy to call, I'm happy to call the town attorney and he can, he can very quickly tell me um, what we can do. We're not going to incur any, any great expense doing that, but no. I just want to, I truly, I'm sorry this has been going on. We have tried to respond in the past and it hasn't worked. So now I think unless everybody disagrees, we need to move up to the next. I think somebody's waiting in the waiting room. Come oh, on. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I would agree Don't with you, Ginger. I don't know what to do. I don't run back. Okay. Exactly. Our uh, assistant here is resetting herself. Unless his name again. Okay, well, thank you for bringing that to our attention again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry this is ongoing. There is nothing more difficult for us to deal with than disputes in between neighbors. And when they involve town roads, it makes it even worse. Makes it even worse. So thank you.
And any uh, keep sending to Victor any any pictures or anything you uh, you notice that's going on, so we have a record. Yeah, I mean honestly, we have we have whatever you have sent us in the past, but any any ongoing. Uh, yeah, and I um, we've been fixing it too, and I and I let Vic know normally. I ask first if he's given permission, and when he says no, I normally respond with I'm going to fix it yeah. because as the policy says, they need to leave it in as good or better condition. So not yeah. damage your yeah. neighbor's property okay. or make it hard to them for them to get home. Okay, thank you. Um, quickly, and we're now behind schedule. Uh, monthly uh, meeting with the fire department, welcome. So you got, you all got a copy? Of yes. This? All right, so uh, seven calls for the month, 17 total. Um, our average numbers are down a little bit, but our min response is three, so that's better. Uh, we have been dealing with some people me, who has called and haven't been able to respond. Um, the calls are listed there. The big thing is um, we've had the heating system have to be repaired twice in the last month. And I talked to the repairman yesterday and he said, we can try to limp it along till spring, summer, but it would not recommend putting any more because the heat transfer is leaking. And um, it recommends to replace it. So we've got somebody coming um, the um, 12th of April to do it. So when you say the boy replacing the, the, the whole boiler needs to be boiler. replaced, it's and it's not when when you when I say boiler, you have a a thing that you think of, and this thing is not that. This is more, I, I'm serious. It's it's more like a, an instantaneous um, hot water heater. Kind of like OD heater. It's, it's an a, on demand boiler. On demand. It's it's a tri what's called a triangle boiler. Triangle tube. Yeah. And we've had, I mean, this thing has been issued. We've had issues every year with it. Um so this year's cost us a lot of money. We want to if this is gonna and you can one of the pipes, one of the main pipes is already starting to corrode at the top. So if that blasts, then we're out of heat. This, didn't you indicate that it was part of the issue was your water, your hard water? Hard water, and that's part of the thing. Yeah. I, I got the estimate on the water softener. Yeah. Um, but the the heating system is a major item. Right. And I don't know what the price is going to be. You know, I got the, the one estimate, and the only reason I have borns and I haven't gotten anybody else is because this happened yesterday. Because yeah. uh, it, it was, again, not lighting. So when they went in for a call, uh, Last night, Sunday night, Sunday night, it was 45 degrees in the bay. <clears throat> um, so it's like, yeah, we need to get somebody over. So fortunately, I found out about it Monday morning so I can get somebody not on the weekend on double time emergency call. And they came out and fixed it. Um, I had to put a new igniter in it and they got it going. But he said, we can try to limp it along till spring, summer, but I would not put any more serious money in that. Well, there's a good news because there's money coming in to pay for the municipal heating thing. So it's, I mean, as soon as I get the estimate, and I'll, I'll try to get other estimates as well, uh, not just just the Bourne's estimate, but it made sense since Bourne's, that's where we get our fuel from, and they had somebody who could come in a couple of weeks to to look at it, to at least get an estimate from them, and we'll try to. We've got to have heat, and we've got right. to have reliable heat. So. Right. But hold on, I really think it. this is not, if we need a new boiler and there's funding for something that's more energy efficient, we need to do that. We're not going to go and get a 30-year boiler. If we have, if there's a $500,000 grant to buy these things for free and we do energy efficiency, which is a part of our town plan, we had, this is really good information to have because we can add it to Grant. This big grant that we're going to apply for that is not just for town hall stuff, but for any municipal building. Well, when we use renewable energy instead of yeah, we would fuel? use we would use renewable energy. Yeah. yeah, we wouldn't replace it with an oil boiler or a propane boiler. I don't know if that building is set up for that. Well, someone would look at it, right? I mean, that would be at the, at the very least that that's a part of also this whole process is that someone comes in and looks at every building and gives an assessment. This is all a part of this $500,000. So, so what's the time frame of being able to? 
Um, well, the funding hasn't been released right this minute, um, but it's planning to be released soon for application and um, has to be spent by, um, has to be completely spent by 2026. So there's time to actually apply for all this, but um, but I, I really would say if there's any way that we can, you know, continue to repair this thing to get you through so that we can make sure that we can access lots of money and go with what the town plan is. Like the town plan is to do this, not to buy something for the next 30 years. So but this does, does this also include upgrading the electrical system? It the could very well, yes. I mean, it's all could, related. Could or does? We don't know. We haven't seen. I, there's a webinar. We, we're on it with this boiler. We we're on a short time. I think yes. I you hear you. This is we're by next day. winter. By next winter. Yeah. We're not going to make you cold, but <laughs> the, at the very least, we need to explore. If, if you're telling us that there's absolutely no way that thing can be repaired or holding on to its last legs and it has to be replaced before next winter. Maybe this grant will be available by then, but I mean, it should be available by then, but we have lots of other things that are going on and we can ask that question. We can say, we have a municipal building right this minute that needs to be replaced. You know, there could be an opportunity to apply twice or something or to add on to your application, but we don't know yet. Who, who might be a short term? There could be a short term thing, yes. Who and when can we get them in to do an estimate, whether it's even viable to? To do that with that building. We still, we don't even have the grant application for that yet. Like this is all literally in the emails last week coming from the Regional Planning Commission. There's webinars that are about to start. Like we're getting that information as soon as we can. But this is like at the very least, we have to explore well, the opportunity. Jeff, what, I, what I would suggest is this. If, you, if you're anxious to start working on this, that's when you're talking to these vendors, say, listen, we are interested in energy conserving measures, you know, and be that, I don't know, be that wood chips, be it. Because the propane ones are any energy efficient. They're like 96% efficient, but you want renewable energy. I don't think that counts. That, I'm guessing propane does not count in these, but I don't know. They might for big municipalities. It might be something that they that they have some efficiency, but Jeff, I can't answer any of those questions because I don't have the information yet. They have not released the information to give us exact details of like, In the short because run. you're not, we're not the only municipality who has this problem, right? Like this is a statewide thing. And so they're trying to provide oodles of funding to pay for all of this upgrade <laughs> And we have this window of time between when they release the grant, which will be this year, and to spend it by 2026. It's an, it's actually a short time. It's a federal. It's federal, yeah. It's. Um, I think what you're trying to say is we don't want to go to a 30-year plan when <laughs> six years down the road we're supposed to be uh, all uh, no fossil fuel. All we well, I'm just saying if there's if there's a technology that repeat our our fire department and we can use money to pay for it and not have to bond for that i mean or 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 put thirty thousand dollars for it why wouldn't we do uh, that? i believe i believe and i don't know either we're all going to learn a lot more about this but yes. one of the things one of the things that is questions. likely to be allowed under this is the uh air and hot water heat pumps and i don't know yes. if there's and i don't know if if they make them in such a size that we could heat Wouldn't that. Wouldn't boilers maybe? Fire department. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be a lot of um, opportunity here. And so I would not, I would just say, I'm glad to hear this, right? And that you're telling us this because this could very well, this isn't just about the town hall. This is about the town shed, right? We can weatherize the town shed. There's lots of things that we can do with this five million dollars. Well, in, in addition if, if we're going the electric route on this thing, I would imagine we're going to have to upgrade the service to it. We're going to have to upgrade the generator to it. Probably so. So if these things aren't included, if it's just the heat system, there's a substantial cost that's not covered. We're going to have to 
we're going to find out. Jeff. Okay, I, I'm just saying. Jeff, we're going to we're going to okay. find I, out. We get it. We understand. We're, we understand what you're telling us. It's just what we don't want to do is go ahead and have the town plan to pay for a whole new heating system. A, if we can get somebody else to pay, and B, if we can get something that's more energy efficient and also complies with the town plan. So we're not going to leave you without a heating system, no matter what. And if heaven forbid, if heaven forbid that boiler fails in the next 30 days here or whatever we have left of the winter heating season, and we have to get temporary heat in there, we'll get temporary heat in there. We're not going to let the fire department freeze. So have them have them do the immediate repairs, but don't order up any new boilers, please. Well, no, I mean, I'm going to get more, and I'm going to get more than one estimate. I know, but, but, I, but I, I, I know, I'm I, just telling you, don't spin your wheels getting estimates for replacements of what we have, because it's likely that what we want is to get estimates for a different kind of system. Can I interrupt while we pass this hand up? Yep, 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 yep. Wow, I know we're right past now. our uh, we're past right. our uh, 550. Do you have anything else quickly, Jeff? Uh, just the uh, the water softener estimate is 4600. Yeah, for the system installed. Okay, and that will also solve our manganese problem, which will allow us to drink the water again. Do okay. you have your water tested? I'm just asking because a lot of Middlesex water is is uh, you know you, you get a water softener, but it really doesn't. You really need a filter. No, we had he came in and tested it, and it it's a water filter and a water softener because we have. Particulates and iron oh, and manganese. So you need two. So we need the softener and the filter. Well, the okay. filter first and then the softener. Right. Okay. That's what I thought. Thank okay. You. So um I think Larry Dorinda, wanted to speak to this subject as well. Okay, Larry. Hello. Yeah, so. Larry having a problem unmuting. I don't have permission. Isn't that permission? Apparently, um, we're on it. I don't think we've got to mute it here. They asked to unmute. What happened when you hit that? I did that. Nothing's happening with it. Where's going on the phone? Um, yeah, it's, I did ask to unmute and it's not doing anything. Can anyone else talk? I heard Tom Go out and come back in. See my yes, go out, Larry, go out and come back in. He just said, see my above note in the see chat. See my maybe. above note. Okay. Is that him calling in? No. No, no that's somebody else. Okay. We're in the chats. Um, must happen in 2023, he's saying. Um, the building assessment oh, the building must assessment. happen in 2023. And he can't unmute. He doesn't have permission. But... So that's the thing where somebody's coming in to assess each building. That's going to be done this year. Right. And we have cool. to, there's certain funding you have to apply for in order to get, like, first you have to apply for this funding to do the assessment before you can apply for the 500000 And they give it to you, like, it's automatic. Like, the, like, you just apply and they'll give you the funding to have someone come in and assess. But we're not going to be the only town doing it. So... So the other issue we had under the fire department was considering a memorandum of understanding for M1 service with the city of Montpelier, Barry City Deputy Chief. And I know you're here, or yes, you are. Is that a, is that a quick thing, or do you need a few minutes? Um, it really depends on what questions you have for me. Um, I noticed on your agenda it said something about the ambulance service, and that's not what I'm here to talk about. <laughs> This was the, the questions that you had of, of who's my peers holding the funding and the years of the funding oh, and right. the list. Right, right, right. Well, are you are you available to hold on for 10 or 15 minutes? Would that be a problem? No, no, sir. I'll be here. Okay, thank you very much. So um with that, I'd uh like to take up consideration of the uh energy code discussion where uh we are being asked to uh, put the name on a proposal to create 
Uh, actually, I'll let you, you John or, or Larry, describe what we're actually being asked to do. Well, Larry's on mute. So uh, I guess that falls on me, but I don't remember the details of it. Uh, why don't I tell you what little I know and um, uh, Larry, you know, let us know if I miss something. I can chime in. Oh, there you go. Okay. Take it away, Larry. Okay. Thanks, John. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, this is Larry Scharf from the Middlesex Energy Committee. Um, so the Energy Committee is strongly in favor of this and the proposal from this, organ this uh, group of architects and others um, that's asking for this letter of support is um, proposing to study how best the state of Vermont could bring enforcement to the state building energy code. And the, the basic reason for doing enforcement is that the, the energy code in Vermont um, is at a certain level that requires a certain amount of energy efficiency, but there's nobody out there checking to see if it's being done to that level. And surveys in the past have shown a, 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 a lot of um, uh, houses not meeting the actual code. And as the code continues to get stronger, as it, as it is supposed to by law in Vermont, uh, more and more people will fall short. And it's not necessarily intentional, but because they don't know. And um, the best way to remedy that is through bringing about not just enforcement, but a whole system of education as well. And so that's what this group is proposing. And the, our energy committee discussed this, and we feel that it's a good thing to do for the state of Vermont. Um, Individual towns can't do the enforcement on their own. Uh, that's we just don't have that capacity. So we strongly encourage us, uh, the, the town, to support a statewide effort. Okay, is that is that part of the global? Uh, when you say the law, is that the Global Solutions Act? The you the law that? says that the building code will be made stronger. I don't actually know where that comes from. I, I, it's, I think it predates the Global Warming Solutions Act. Because it's been, it's been getting stricter every three years for a while now. Would it be, hold on a second, John. Go ahead, would it be, would it, would it be, uh, would they entertain the idea, you know, uh, you did say something about education, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't say I won't, wouldn't agree on it, but I think that uh, if if people uh, were able to uh, uh, get their their house uh, or their home, uh, uh, like a blower door caster, whatever, to see what what it needed on a voluntary basis, not. Not so much the person volunteers, but to have people, uh, you know, approach, uh, especially poor and older people in town, to get them uh, interested in it, rather than mandate it, uh, is is what I'm trying to say. I don't know if I'm making so that clear. I I think I'm right that the, that the code would pertain to new construction only, correct? No, we renovation have projects as well. This does apply to renovation projects as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it does address that. Right. Anytime right. a building permit is requested. Right. Right. But this, you know, I mean, um, I don't know. I don't know everybody in town, but I know several people that are paying like fifteen hundred dollars a month for for fuel, you know, fossil fuel, and they just, you know, they they're paying it, but they don't really want to, but they don't really want. You know they're at that point in their age that they don't it's not real easy for them to to change and well, i don't know how you address that i don't but i just think it's easier than mandating and then i don't know who enforces it what's what's the cost of enforcement and who enforces it right well, well I, I, go ahead Don. i i would i would 
just I think those are really good questions, Vic. Which I think it's important to uh, realize that this is a study, and somebody brought up the question of, well, that's just going to raise our taxes, and it's true. Uh, there's going to be some cost. I guess the real the, the reason I think it's worth supporting is that um, the reality is that there's some very low percentage, even though this code is in place, it's been in place for a while. Um, I'm sure half the people don't even know what it looks like. It's very strict that it has air requirements, duck requirements, blah, blah, blah. But half the people don't even know it's there and it's not enforced. So if you don't use it, if you don't have time for it, you don't. So the reality is, even though I don't like big government making me do stuff, uh, enforcement ensures consistency and, it, and it's some way to ensure compliance. Without it, it's kind of a joke. So it doesn't make sense for the town to hire somebody or every town, 284 uh, residential building energy code compliance officers. That makes no sense. There's like five offices in this whole state that enforce the entire public building life safety code. So it wouldn't take a huge number of people to uh, add residential, you wouldn't think. And that seems to be more sensible than trying to do it on our own or do what business as usual, which is the code gets stricter and stricter and then you just ignore it all more and more. So I think it's worth studying and supporting the idea. And I think some of these questions, which are how are you gonna pay for it, um, uh, hopefully it will come out of it. Okay. Uh, just to, to, to Vic's question, the, um, in terms of folks who really need improving of their homes, Efficiency Vermont is there with all kinds of support, especially for lower income folks. So as a voluntary measure, that is very much available. That's the key word right there. And capstone as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, they do. But the key word is income and a lot of these older people uh, you know they're they're not that you know just because you're old doesn't mean you're poor but doesn't mean that you get ready to spend all your life savings doing it i think it's a slippery slope uh, i would ask john uh, i don't know if you remember when i did my house a few years ago there we were supposed to be really super in energy efficient and everything and uh, you know the, the 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 jury was out on what was the best stuff to use i mean it's that has that tightened up? I mean, is there a consensus of what, uh, you know, what is best to use for insulation? What is uh, best to use for, for uh, whatever, uh, windows, uh, on and on. I mean, I, mean, I, I when I did mine, it was, uh, you know, I missed, I missed the mark on windows, but I thought I was getting great windows, but I, I really didn't. So I didn't I, I can answer that. What's that? I, I can answer that, and the answer is no. Uh, okay. What keeps it exciting is that the rules keep changing. We used to not allow electric heat. Now we're, we're sponsoring. We're pushing electric heat. So, uh, no, you, the, that's one of the reasons why uh, every builder isn't expected to know the latest and greatest that, things that last. Uh, it's, it's an exciting uh, time, frankly. But, no, there's no right answer, and it'll be wrong tomorrow. But I'll just reiterate that, that this is all about enforcing the, the building code for new construction and major renovations, not right. for every house out there that's just sitting as it is. Well, it's right. to be clear, it's it's any renovation that needs to be a building permit. And it's right. not just major renovation. Yes. So, right. Um, right. <clears throat> and that they would have to define that pretty carefully too. Uh, right. we got we got so just hold on a minute. Enrique, you have your hand up. Yeah, the thank you. The code is supposed to be reviewed every three years by law. That's what the, the lawmakers decided uh, like 15 years ago. And that is a process that has been come, uh, happening every three years. We just um, went through the review for the 20, uh, 2023 uh, upgrade. And that's uh, supposed to be coming in September. So at this point, uh, the uh, public service uh, department is about to issue the the upgrade based on the consensus of the um, collaboration of many people that uh, and the participation also of the stakeholders. So that's that for that. 
In terms of enforcement, I mean, the code by itself is very poor here. Uh, at this point, the code is 70% short of uh, the uh, high performance building. So, and with the uh, upgrade that we are having, it's gonna be about 50% short. So, it, and, and it's, it's the bare minimum that you should uh, uh, follow in order to have a reasonable, I mean, energy efficiency home or building, but that's still not um, the case. Our, our biggest challenge in Vermont is to weatherize the existing stock, which is very, very way behind in terms of energy efficiency. And that's it. So we cannot uh, afford to uh, build new buildings that are going to require uh, weatherization in a five or or less time in order to meet the our goal of uh, getting rid of fossil fuels. So it's it's very important. One of the reasons why the code has been so slow in, in being improved is because the building community says that uh, why should they imp uh, improve the code if there is no enforcement? Because the 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 the, the, the Plain field, the field is not leveled if there is no enforcement. So while some right. people would like to uh, do the right thing, there are others that uh, want to uh, uh, do shortcuts and get and, and get the, 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 the business. So it's it's uh, it's paramount to really start uh, enforcing the code, even if it's not the best of all. But at least it's, 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 it creates a level feel for everybody to compete at the same level. So that's Thank it. you. Good and in point. terms of windows, all the windows that are being offered for renovation, Anderson, they are not for Vermont. For Vermont, we need triple uh, glaze, double hang, right. no, no, no double hang windows. So. If, if, if you put the, all those windows that are supposed to be energy efficient, uh, double hang and stuff like that, they may be uh, energy efficient for South Carolina or other places, but not for Vermont. We need triple glazed U value of, I mean, an R value of at least seven and above to really make uh, the window uh, appropriate for Vermont. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, you your hand up. So the, the one question was answered this is only on new construction or renovations, but when you had said even minor renovation, so if you do a minor re renovation, you're going to have to redo your whole house as far as for energy efficiency or the just areas, the areas that are impacted by that renovation. Okay. With the permit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So are we, is this something that we're planning to vote on tonight? We have to vote on tonight because the, uh, we're just voting to approve the, right. the formation of the committee though. Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's that's all we're, that's all we're being right. asked to do. We're not being asked for money. We're not being asked for anything. They just want to put our name, uh, put our name on the request. So if we're going to do it, tonight's the night to do it. And what I'm hearing is that our energy committee supports it. Um, also, Britsky wrote that letter of support. Yeah. Yeah. You is there, is there any statistic to what Enrique said that, I mean, you know, he, he indicated that, you know, it would force people to do uh, up to the code. Uh, is there anybody out there that's building, uh, doing buildings right now? I mean, uh, you know, building a house or whatever that's not trying to to get it energy efficient as possible without, I think the answer is probably there are, Victor. A lot of people out there, I mean, one of the things, one of the things John Rahill and I talked about today is when you look at the new houses that are being in, built in Middlesex, and I haven't been through every one of them, but the houses that I've seen and the construction I've seen, they're trying to do their best to be energy efficient. I mean, I, it, just make, it just makes sense. Right. But, as you pointed out, if I have any concern in Middlesex, my concern is the folks who have the older homes 
who are horrendously unenergy efficient and they're spending a fortune on heating fuel. And if this combination of work and enforcement can provide but resources for them, for me, it's a it's a no-brainer. I mean, we know, you know, yeah. I, I agree with it. I agree with it. But if if that terrible old house that's costing fifteen hundred dollars worth of propane a month, the guy, if the person says I'm not upgrading it, I'm not doing any renovation, they're not they wouldn't it. they wouldn't need just to be clear. Folks that aren't going through renovation projects would not need to upgrade their existing. They're not going to get forced to right. to, right. to exactly. compliance. So you still got all these old houses. That, I know, yes, but you can't. That's, you know, that's the old. You, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make a drink argument. You know. That's the whole. We know that there are hundreds thousands of homes that that are in desperate need of weatherization and need all these kinds of repairs. We're aware of that in Vermont, but that's a problem. It's a problem, but that really isn't this yet. Um, if I could spend my two cents as a commercial electrician who's worked all over the state of Vermont, I can tell you right now, even with inspectors on job sites, I just got off a job site not a month ago that they didn't even follow the electrical code there, and a state fire marshal was there last week doing the inspection. So just because you have a code and they're supposed to follow it doesn't mean that they're going to enforce it if it's at some place that's got enough money so that they don't care. Right. Because no, a, lot of, a lot of times, a lot of times it's cheaper to just build it anyway and pay the fine and they don't care. And not to say that, you know, the people of Middlesex would do that in a residential setting, but I've worked with enough residential contractors at the same time who will cheap it out every which way they can if they're able to. Yeah. They, they do I the best you. they can for as cheap as possible to make the most amount of profit. And that's the end of the, that's the end of it at the end of the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, what say you select board members? Is this something we're willing to put the town name on? I'm not. But I am. And Somebody willing to make a motion? Well, I'll move that we support the, um, that we provide a letter of support. We don't even we need, need to a letter of support. All we, we say. Support their initiative to yeah. form this. What? Yes, it's, this it's edge called the committee. Yeah, the committee. Yeah. What is it called? It's called the. Um, well, it's that it's it's essentially just providing uh, support for their application. Yeah, for their application. Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. You know, we're not providing support for the committee itself. It's just saying yes, we stand behind we'll them, their them applying for the funding to to research this issue. So we're applying for a study, a funding for a study. That's that's what this group has has proposed is that they're going to submit an application for funding to get a group of stakeholders together to explore the feasibility of um, what it may look like to try to get the state to provide compliance and enforcement within the energy code. In I don't want to be anti efficient. <laughs> So I just want to know. I know. I want to know what what I want. Did you mean that's what you're saying? Okay, so I think I got it. He just explained it to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have a we have a motion, but it has not yet been seconded. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second the motion. Okay. So we have a motion that's been moved and seconded to um, put the town's uh, support behind this behind this project. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Nobody opposed. We've approved it. I will let I will let uh, I will let Sandy know that she can put our name on the on the proposal. Thank you all for your uh, participation. And come back when when this when you get the study because that's there'd be lots of issues to to weigh in on. Yeah. There you go. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thanks for coming. So we are back to the fire department and the uh, ambulance. And that's the ambulance, the MLA. The MLA, yeah. the memo of understanding. Memo of understanding, right. So you, you all had questions last month about that, and Joe is the one to okay. answer this. So Joe, you're on. Thank you for your patience and uh, understanding. Absolutely. Let, 
can and can I address the board for a second, Mr. Chair? Yes. So my name is Deputy Chief Joe Aldsworth from the Bear City Fire Department. I'm the Vice President of Capital Fire Mutual Aid for the record. Um, the MOU in front of you addresses the future upgrade of the radio system that does not uh, impact the current uh, $2.44 million in funding that we have been tentatively awarded by the state of Vermont. Just so that everybody's clear that that money is like a, in a savings account. So like when you plan to buy a plow truck or a fire truck, we are saving for the future. Uh, when, when I came out to this position, uh, God, it must be 15 years ago, we were struggling and trying to find, uh, find a way to upgrade the radio system. Uh, we are very fortunate that Montpelier was the fiduciary for this grant request and that we were tentatively awarded. The state is doing their due diligence and they're hiring a project manager to assist us. But the radio system is uh, owned by Capital Fire Mutual Aid, which the town of Middlesex is a member in good standing. Hence, you guys own a portion of the radio system. This allows us to upgrade currently with the funding, but also create a savings account that will be invested and put down the road for 10 years when the radio ages out. Um, it allows us to be able to pay for it ahead of time so that we don't have to burden future municipalities or fire departments to figure out how we're gonna upgrade it. This came as part of a uh, directive from the governor when he was starting to put together the funding for regional dispatch systems. And uh, one of the requirements of the grant was to uh, have an MOU in place, understanding uh, the obligation to the system, but also a capital improvement plan, which was the spreadsheet that I sent to uh, Chief Coon. So um, I'm gonna leave it there. I'll answer any questions that you need. I hope that gave you a little more direction. Thank you. Board members, questions? So is there some confusion on the MOU for the ambulance and the MOU for this? Because this is not, it's, it's, there is confusion, there is confusion in our, uh, in our agenda. Okay. And I was confused myself. So okay. what we're talking about is the radio dispatch. The ambulance is already, you already signed that one. Okay. Yes. So Jeff, do you have any? No, I didn't have it. You have no skin in the game. Essentially, we don't because this is this is for you guys signing that you understand what's going on for the for the radio system. And and I thought you had some questions last month uh, about it. As far as we're concerned, as a department, we just we need a, a radio system, and and we know we've got to pay the town's got to pay part of the radio system plus. There's grant money out there that has gone to the radio system. So it was more, you guys had questions on the, that Montpelier was holding it and what was, how much money it was going to be. And uh, I think those were, I think those were the questions. I, I think, I think our question was, uh, I believe we had an estimated figure of what our share of this was going to be. Yes, sir. Um, approximately. I don't, have that, I don't have that material here with me. I I saw the ambulance, and I didn't. I wasn't thinking uh, radio before I came down to the meeting, so I don't have it with me. Yeah, it's approximately twenty nine hundred and forty three dollars a year. Uh, it, it's it's uh, developed by the former manager for the Waterbury town of Waterbury, Mr. Shepleck. He developed it through the Equalized Municipal Grand List. Um, which is the which makes it more fair across the board for all the municipalities, especially those that are not as wealthy or uh, have such a large grand list. So it became more fair. So that's why this was developed. Um, yeah. Just so you know, this this mechanism has been forwarded to the legislature and put out to other regional dispatch centers to adopt. A similar way, so we're actually a, like gold standard for the state. So, how many how many towns have approved the MOU so far? I currently have five. 
Can you can you tell us who they are? Yep, it's the uh, city of Barrie, city of Montpelier. Um, I believe I got the town of Middle, not Middle, uh, Marshfield. Um, and I believe I just testified for the town of Whitesfield that approved it. And um, the town of Chelsea just got back to me and they're on their board. They had just a couple of questions like you folks. Um, and I believe Williamstown was the other one that approved it. Oh, the town of Berlin. The note, the town of Berlin actually paid the whole 10 years in advance. So they are, they will be paid in oh, Maybe we maybe we should have them pay for us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so but we, I don't think we do. We have it here no. designed. We don't no, we don't. It. I yeah. I think what unfortunately we're we're a little unprepared for tonight, and I apologize for that. I'm going to suggest that we take this up at our next board meeting, and we can have it in front of us and, and approve it. review yeah. it and yeah. approve it. But I think there was also a question about when we had to pay this money because it hadn't been budgeted, and um. You know, and I thought originally when this was presented to us, it was something that either we paid by the year or within so many years we have to pay the bulk of it or something. There was like Is a thirty thousand dollars. Right. Is that the same thing we're talking about? I don't know, Joe. So, so this is designed to be an annual assessment by the capital fire mutual aid. So that when you receive your annual mutual aid dues, you also receive the invoice that says this is the assessment for the radio system. So the next assessment and radio uh, mutual aid dues will be due uh, after July one. Okay, so there was definitely some confusion on our part because I think right. we were talking about whether it was a a ten year lump sum tallying that thirty thousand dollar figure, or we were investing over I the course that of that ten, it, ten years. Yeah. So that hasn't, so basically what they're saying is what we budgeted for our fiscal year 24 is going to be $2,000 higher. Yes, Correct. yes, ma'am. Yeah, $2,900. Well, $2,900. $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, I've got it here somewhere and I'm, I'm yeah. trying to find it. but uh, Roughly yeah. $2,950, sir. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Okay, but let's. I think we should. I think we should yeah, pass. We should okay. Pass right. We need to. Uh, there was a whole spreadsheet. Yeah, list. Okay, yeah, there was that a came, with it. That yeah. came with the year after year, and it gave us town by town, based on a right. per capita level, uh, what everybody's contribution was expected to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we will we will take this up at our next meeting and we will get back to you. Thank you sure. very much for being here tonight. Does, if, it, if does you, anybody have any other questions about this, board members? Hold on, he was trying to say yeah. something. If you would like me to come to your next meeting, I'm more than happy to do so. Okay. Yeah. I, I think the questions that I had uh, based on that, now that I'm clear on what we're talking about, I think you've answered the questions I had anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think okay. so. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Okay. Back and forth, we do that email because it has it has the things that we're talking about. Can you about include here. me on that too? Yes, because I I did not find the spreadsheet. Well, are you showing the spreadsheet and not just a chart? That could have been a chart. It was. That could have been a chart. It was colors. It was yellow and right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because this email this is, does not have a spreadsheet on it, but this is the one that has this um the memorandum memorandum of understanding. I can okay. send it to the clerk if you would like. That would be wonderful. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Sure. That'd be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's get back. Yeah. Dorinda, yes. thank you for your patience. <laughs> um, I really, You're up. I don't think I have anything, to be honest with you. Okay. Nothing I can think of at the moment. So we have orders. Clarification of road commissioner compensation and statements at the 314-2023 meeting. Is that you, Dorinda? No, that is Victor's request. Oh, okay. Victor, are you done with the fire department? Yeah? Yes, I'm all set. On the Thanks, guys.
Okay. Director, you're on. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I think there's something in the minutes that says that uh, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to be road commissioner or not. And I, I apologize to the uh, select board and especially to uh, the town clerk and that, uh, um, that I brought this up, but I was, I was upset. Uh, I was questioning whether I wanted to do this or not. And uh, it was kind of an impromptu thing. It was, uh, uh, it had been going on for a while, but uh, uh, circumstances in the, in the, the last half hour, uh, I didn't have time to think about it, but uh, as it turned out, uh, uh, you know, I, I certainly like working with uh, Eric and I certainly uh, like doing it. Um, I spend a lot of time at it. And uh, uh, I, uh, well, really, when I, re I read in the paper this morning, it was kind of, you know, bad like signs and stuff that come to it. And it was all the disruption down in Heartland. And I don't think we need that here. So I'm just going to move on. Okay. And when I say move on, I'm going to stay as road commissioner. Yeah. And I don't have any issues other than that. It is Thank what you. it is. It is what it is. And uh, yeah, we don't really need it. So no. hopefully, hopefully that I uh, appreciate that. Hopefully that uh, we can all uh, come together. As far as the uh, compensation, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, okay. Don't have anything. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um. Before we get, we'll do that on our business. Okay. Yeah, um, discussion of town employees' use of leave time. That was not made. That was wasn't that. Did we were did we resolve that the last time? I thought I we did. Uh, Dorinda said it was resolved. I don't know. What oh, that was in, That was just how the hours okay. were calculated. Right. But right. Eric Pez is well aware, and Cheryl's well aware, and it's okay. just an oversight. Okay. Great. So what happened was that Eric and I went down and the question I think you had, don't let me put words in your mouth, was that the, what I heard was that the, the, that, uh, the employee was buying time. Yeah, so the, situ the situation was uh, the employee used paid time off over and above 40 hours during the work week which is essentially kind of buying their personal time. Yeah. So the comment was that my understanding of the existing policy is that the paid time off is basically designed to be there to bring them up to their 40 hours. And it's not that they worked overtime or they worked, you know, 38 hours and they put in for eight hours of personal time because they're out for an entire day. And there's essentially six hours over and above the 40 hours that they're being bought out of their personal time that the policy was designed to allow them to use two hours of personal time or vacation or whatever to get them to their 40 hours. And then the rest of that remains in their bank for use at a later point in time. But essentially going over that 40 hours with any of that paid time off is a buyout of that time. Which we don't do, right? But he does. But he's perfectly okay to do that if that's what he wants. He's actually helping helping the town because he he's never going to get that day back, and it's like it, it's a day that he's not going to take off in the summertime when we need it more. But it's not. There's not anything. You know, it's not nothing in our policy right now that makes that not okay. I thought there was, yeah. So if you want to change it, we're going to have to change the person. Right, but there, what, I thought this this happened. We, it's always it happened a while back. It happened March first. Determined March first, whatever. March first. It was on his the first. Day. No, no, no. This happened previous employee. Yeah, it was discussed in the minutes about a year ago. About yeah. a year ago. Right. Oh, okay. well, it, that was. No, and that was what it came out to that we don't pay over. We budget for forty hours a week plus oh, the overtime that we give. 
So if they use more than 40 hours a week, that's pushing you out of the budget. Mm -hmm. How can I push you out of the budget? Because you're now paying for 47 hours a week. Right, but that's seven hours, you've got to pay at some point. Anyway. At some point somewhere, but they're not working those, so that number is budgeted. You know, so you're putting in more money than what is actually budgeted at a different time. You know, I would be willing to help just if if you make payroll records available to me, like you could do an analysis of, you know, I, what I heard from last meeting is um, perhaps there's employees that would rather us, would rather the town move to the the day eight hour and then over time versus the 40 hour. And I did a little bit of research and it's it's not out of the norm. And some states even go a lot further where you have to, if you work more than 12 hours, all of a sudden that's twice your hourly rate. So if you do the math, what I've found, it kind of levels out that if you do the eight hour and they, they get their eight hours and you know, say they work 10, you get that two hours of overtime, say they work under eight hours, perhaps one or two days, and then they do want a sick leave. If you parcel that all out over time, um, you're, it's not a lot more money and it kind of makes it easier for the employee to feel like they're getting their overtime, that, that 1.5 allowance of, of their regular rate of pay. Well, I think the overtime is certainly a different conversation. So I, I, I'd be more than happy to like take it, you know, if you want to do a data dump and a spreadsheet and, a nat and do an analysis of, you know, how many overtime hours were there actually spent. Yeah, and what a, would that cost have been? It's a paper request at that point. Um, there's none of this is in a database right. that can do a data data dump. You're essentially going back through timesheets. And for example, like the if you look at the labor logs for like for like this this week's, essentially, you know, you've got. And I was looking at this. Uh, there's a um, a situation in here where essentially. You know, you've got an employee that took a day and a half off. Mm -hmm. They worked, you know, a couple longer days. And, and in that essence, you know, we're not paying any overtime here. Mm -hmm. And then they're getting, they're getting, you know, eight hours of they're overtime sickly. throughout, throughout here. Mm -hmm. No, not even including sick leave, just thinking about work out. Okay. Um, so, so in that situation, you've got a full day's pay for, for uh, an employee at a rate of 1.5. Mm -hmm. That's over and above anything that the town would have paid before. Gotcha. So I think that, you know, there's a couple of different conversations here. And I, I truly believe that one, now is not the time to, to come and, and try to make changes to these policies because it's just after the budget has been completed. Right. I that, was if just... we're gonna, that if we're going to take this and we're going to make recommendations, for change, then for this needs year. to be reviewed as a whole, mm -hmm. as far as the, the uh, policies with the road crew, so that they understand the changes and the implications. Because, quite honestly, one conversation um, would lead me to recommend one one way, and another piece of that conversation would lead me a totally separate way. So I feel like to make this fair for the guys, if they're truly pushing this, which I understand them. Okie dokie. Um, well, then it's a moot point. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe it isn't something that you. And you I can would... correct me if I'm wrong, Victor. But my, yes, they're not. My understanding is that when I asked you, when I asked you if they were putting this issue, you said that they weren't. And not at this time. I mean, not right that time. Not right now. Right now, but they will. And I thought we were supposed to talk, bring this up early so that we would have it for the the. Uh, uh, next budget year so that's exactly what my com what my right. previous statement was leading to was that if yeah. we need to review the policy as a whole what do you want to do that? and make recommendations for change right then i would actually encourage all of the all of the road crew and any town employee quite honestly because it doesn't just affect them it affects everybody else in town employment to to sit that's down right. As we do this review and we've talked and part of the goals is to do a review of the personnel policy more in depth than has had happened right. over in the past. Right. And I would suggest that that's the time and prior to that, doing some of that analysis to understand what the true cost of the town is. 
Right. So it'd be yeah. one. Like if you flipped the scenario and then you came up with a number. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, and to my other point, and I'd be happy to go over this after, but um I think this was uh this was a an example where um they took some time off. There was there was no there was an hour's worth of overtime uh, of actual work time. Um, and then uh, reversing it the other way, you're into it for five hours. So just like things like that, but then they're taking additional days off. And, and I think that's a whole separate issue. The personal time bringing up to the 40 hours versus extending beyond that. You know, that's another recommendation that I would say if we truly want to buy people out, I would much rather say if the cutoff's there, then put in a request for a buyout and don't use your vacation time. So we're being more productive. We can budget to that much easier than, mm -hmm. than you know, trying to deal with it in this manner. Yep. But they, and and to answer your question about it, uh, they don't bring it up right now, but they will. And uh yeah. They have in the past, and 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 it usually comes out later, and then we don't have it like it did last year, and we don't have time to talk about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, their their issue is, uh, uh, you know, that and it hasn't been. It, it really doesn't play out that way. Is that you know, I work twelve hours or whatever, fifteen hours, and then if I take a day off because I'm gotten tired, then I lose all my overtime and a half. And so we don't think, that, and I think that if uh, if you did do that, I think it would actually be advantageous to you in the uh, in the summertime as far as uh, being able to um, uh, to schedule your health better. But I couldn't be wrong. I'm sure you could tell us. It. it very well could be, and the, and again, I think it just warrants. And it's not just me; it's me and Eric. So I guess it is the group. I mean, Eric and I have talked about it several times. So. Guys, just um, quickly, I, I noticed that a year ago in May, we went over our our personnel policy. So if that's something you want to do, that could be on our goal to have that be there sure. in the spring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I am looking through it, and I don't see anything about that specific thing about going, you know, not overtime, but getting paid extra for that thing. But normally that's not how it's done. I just wanted to also say one quick thing about this. Um, do we um, care? I mean, I personally care because it's not the way I would do business, but that he, that Eric approves his own timesheet. Is it's that always been that way? It's always been that way. I do feel like I, it's not that having a second Eric. set of eyes I, I, or somebody right. else doing that, I think the yeah. checks and balances is good. So I would tend to agree with you. Liz. Like that it would be Vic as road commissioner who signs his timesheet. I know that we're approving it when we sign this, but I just think for the sake of, you know. I think that's probably right. Not that Vic even knows what he's doing well, every day. Right? Yeah. But, it's a, you know, a, a point of like, oh, I see that you've done overtime for the last six weeks. Do we need another helper, right? Something like that, right? Like that, that's all. Yeah, right. I'm just saying that's normally you. Even a CEO doesn't approve their own timesheet. Someone else does. I would rather just see his signature on there than having it twice. And yeah, me too. It's the signing it twice that is a little weird. But that's okay. So, are we making a decision about that or not? Well, are you making a motion? I mean, I, can we? It's not on the agenda, and I feel bad that Eric's not here. I don't want to like throw him under the bus. I just, and this has nothing to do with that, but how is that any different than me submitting my own timesheet or Sarah? It, it, or it Sarah? is. I mean, it's exactly did, the yeah. same situation. Right. You just have a single signature on yours instead of an approved right. signature so by Dorinda the as well. Signature. So right. I don't know, you know. I understand. I understand. Yeah, no, I understand. Saying, yeah, I understand. This is a good thing to bring up when we're looking at the personnel policy, right. look at the yeah. whole. Probably that's a good idea. List. Yeah, right. yeah. So, Russ, you're yeah. patiently sitting here listening to all this kind of Middlesex you know what? stuff. Do you have do you well, have something for stuff. us this evening? Uh, well, I have, I have some short things. I just want to sort of keep some things in, in your mind. That okay. You find out if you're interested in them at all. Um, but to the earlier discussion about the um, 
uh, Wheels on Wheels. Um, we, I'm, we'll talk with some of the people at Camp Me and see if we can't raise some money as well. Um, I was going to say this. that we could also apply for some funding through the Middlesex Community Fund. Right. Oh, yep. that's a great idea. So, you know, I, I'm not going to make any promises. For no, that's idea. great. This I mean, I, I, think it, I think it's going to be some kind of, uh, you know, combination of right. combination yeah. of things. And I know you understand the issue. I mean, I understand the, budget, the budget's passed. Yeah, and, uh, I understand the issue. They missed the, the budget. They right. missed the boat, but they're, a, they're an important, valuable program for our. Yeah. And, and I use Meals on Wheels for one of my sisters yeah. um, in another state. Yeah. Um, and for all of those reasons. So I understand it's important. Maybe we um, uh, match you. Yeah. I mean, we'll, the community we'll talk to yeah. some other people and say, what the heck? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of other things you guys cover. And I'm, That's nice. We can talk about that. that. But, you know, in the realm of water and ARPA money and housing and all of that kind of stuff, which is on people's minds, I was listening to the governor's press conference for a little bit today. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, we drilled some wells. Um, up on uh, Galaxy Land, um, okay. we're going through an entire process of proving, you know, what the um, drawdown rates are and replenishment and all that kind of stuff. But we know we have around 100 gallons a minute right now, um, and then we'll see how that proved up. Uh, we hired Otter Creek Engineering, a very good firm, um, to do initial planning, rough planning for. Uh, water system for the properties up there. We know what we want to start with. We have ideas about what phase two would be, housing and whatnot, but we don't really know. We, haven't, we don't know how many units we might be able to do, and we don't know how we want to use the land. Um, but the thing that comes up to, my, to me is um, I asked Otter Creek to tell us what it would cost us to put our water system in place on the property, roughly. And what would it cost to put a municipal system in um, that would go from beyond, a little bit beyond 100 B to probably up to crossing of the river, something like that, just as round numbers. And, and they've got, I have a 90 page report and I'm looking for the executive summary. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I don't want to say too much about numbers, but their numbers are somewhere between five to ten million dollars, something like that, that might be able to happen. Um, and I'm willing to be a good citizen and provide opportunity for the town. Um, we know that there's a lot of ARPA money and stuff available for you, for you if this is something that's interesting to you. And as a planner, one of the things I think about. Um, from a town type of person perspective is when you have infrastructure, you can control what happens with that infrastructure. So you could say, for example, that you wanted to have some percentage of the water be used for affordable housing or you know, low-income housing or jobs or whatever kind of mix that you wanted to do. Um, I think if any of you guys should talk about this amongst yourselves, um, obviously. Um, I think we, Galaxy, would be able to come up with the matching money for, so the town would probably be able to get water for almost nothing. Um, you know, would we become a user? Would we get a different rate than somebody else? I don't know. I haven't thought any of those things really out. But um, I think if there's some interest in pursuing this, um, I would bring the Otter Creek people here to speak with you guys about what it would mean to do that. They're used to getting the grants, all that kind of stuff. Um, they got three and a half million dollars for more town for a septic system. They don't even know where they would put. <laughs> so, so I think so. I think the answer is, and I think this is probably almost exactly what we told you the last time right. is, we'd be foolish not to be interested in this, right? And you know how it would all play out, how it would be right. paid for, what kind of grants would be available. Um, you know, we know we have, we know we have a, uh, a water problem right. in the village, yeah. and both from the point of view of just uh, residential and commercial supply, but also in terms of fire protection. Correct. Um, 
Yeah, I have them priced out hydrants uh, right. and, and upsizes the pipe, all that stuff. Yeah, because then that gives you a whole nother basis of uh, commercial infrastructure for sprinkler systems, all that right. kind of jazz. So, so what I would what I would say, and I, I presume other board members agree. If you don't agree, <laughs> please speak up. But as you work your way through the planning process, keep in touch with us. And when it's an appropriate time, I think it'd be great to hear from the Outer Creek people about what they have to say. Um, They're just about ready. That's why I okay. wanted to come. Okay. And I said something to Sarah in February, but I knew she was busy, and I thought, well, I'll just pop in here. Okay. Um, you know, bring it up. Okay. And you guys can. Because this planning commission, if you go this route, should probably begin to think about zoning in a different way when you know you have this kind of um, asset um, available to you. It would make a difference to infrastructure. Right. It might make it possible for the old railroad station to actually be something if they could get water. I mean, not that it isn't. Nicholas is, you know, he's, a, he's, his, <laughs> own, he's his own person. Um, but yeah. We get it. Yeah, we get it. Well, thank you very so, much. Yeah. So that's and we're it. we're also excited as your plans come along for and your new project up here. We're very interested in knowing about that as well. Yeah. What we want to start with is uh, the thing that we're leading with is uh, daycare for 120, um, 150, um, and with some other uh, well, four story building, basically three story building with. Uh, some kind of housing in the roof, um, a barn-like structure for maker spaces, and a little bit of sort of event kind of thing, weddings, that kind of stuff, that kind of scale thing. Very similar to what we're doing at Camp Meet, um, expounding on the same philosophical thing, which is um, our, our driving thing is to trick people into getting together by entertaining them and forgetting <laughs> that they have any differences. <laughs> You've certainly done well at that over here. Yeah. Right. So we're continuing to do that. And here at Camp Me, we're going to, this year will be a year of just trying to make it look like we're taking better care of business. Yeah, you forgot your jacket. Um, you know, paint things, pay some of the curb fights, uh, you know, do some things like that. We're hoping to get a bunch of targets we're going to put this year too. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's all about those kind of things. But right. uh, the, the crying need in the community is for care for uh, zero to six um, engines. And oh, and I've also had, uh, we, we want to begin with a little bit, probably 12 units of housing, um, some percentage of which would be um, um, subsidized affordable. Will be the first 12 that we do, probably three structures with four units a piece of them, something like that. But nice, nice architecture, um, all that kind of jazz. And I've been having conversations with Down Street about how do we go and do these things in a way that's a little bit different than been done in the past. Um, so if we can find a different way to finance them, um, the largest single cost for a home is the interest on the loan. Mm -hmm. So if we can take that out, it makes it real easy to make affordable housing affordable and in a way that people can build equity and not have too much of the equity taken away. So when they need to move on, they actually can. So anyway, I can go on in this way quite a bit. As you all know, um, we're just trying to be good citizens. So thank we you. appreciate that very um, much. I'll keep you posted when Otter Creek. Um, I'll try for your next meeting. Okay. If that makes sense to you. We'll just communicate with Sarah. Yeah, yeah. It'll probably be okay. like an hour. Later. Okay. Okay. Water. Underwater. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we have a driveway permit. Yeah, we got a driveway permit. Um, Eric has signed off on it. Um, That's Parakeet, yeah, and I think just you, Peter, have to sign it, but I believe it has to be a motion by the board, doesn't it? Yeah. Isn't that the usual yeah, process? That's what we do. What is this? Macy Road? Yeah, question. 418 Macy Road. What does he need? A new driveway or a um, repair? Another driveway in the middle. We got a driveway. 
There's three driveways right in a row, and I think they're going to put another place up. Oh, really? Yeah. And then the driveway goes up, and then everything swings to the uh, west. So is there a motion to approve? Eric has signed off on it. I'll move that we approve the driveway permit for the car keys. I'll second it. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We yeah, have approved it. We went and looked at it on Monday, I think. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, there's an email from Sandra Levine for a contract with Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. They approved it at their last meeting. This is a contract that would fall within the Planning Commission's budget for consultants. Um, and it will be completed by the end of the fiscal year. And it says that Peter has to sign it on behalf of the town and she can come in on April 4th and give you an update. Right. For consulting services. Yeah. Yeah. What is the contract for? Consulting, consulting services. With Central Lot Regional Planning Commission. Twenty one hundred and ninety seven dollars and thirty eight cents. Is Christian Meyer now officially yes, named executive called me. director? This That's exciting. Called me on Friday. He's been there for two weeks and he's very happy. He's now the executive director. Good for him. Uh, I, I think know. he will be uh yeah, I think he will be good. Is there a second motion for the contract that's being signed now? I think it was Dick. Dick. Okay. Oh, I, so there was one motion for all of the board orders. Is that? Oh, we're just. just gonna oh, we signed. We signed the board order. Oh. So there won't be a motion oh, so for the board order. But the this Sandy the, Levine issue does not need a motion. This is a contract for with Central Vermont okay. Regional Planning Commission. Do we need a motion? That's what I'm asking. I. Don't know. All I, I think know in the past, said, in the past, if it's within their budget, it's within yeah. the so I don't think you need okay. to be honest just with checking. you. Um, it's just part of correspondence. Okay. Um, the other thing I had is when we were appointing people to the budget committee, we were supposed to be filling it. Um, there was three open positions. We appointed the two people, new people, but Randy was not reappointed. So, oh um, no, <laughs> did you do that? Oh no, Randy. So, there was actually some confusion on. I can give some backstory. Uh, so I had talked with Sarah about whether or not I needed to do anything, and she said no, um, prior to town meeting. So, I thought I was all set. Um, and she, I will make the motion that I appoint Randy to the budget. Committee. Do you want to be on the budget committee? I would, I would happily continue okay. on. Um, I'll second it. That's fine with me. All those in favor of appointing Randy to the budget committee. Yay, there you go. Okay. Good Good yourself. Job, right? Raise your hand. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you for doing that. And then I think if you want to talk about the town hall. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the good news is, I just got the official word today. I already knew this, but I couldn't share it, that we got the grant for um, the town hall planning study. So VIA, we just have to, <clears throat> excuse me, I think we uh, budgeted up to 28,000 and we had to do a 10% match. So it's about 2,800 that we'll have to pay and the rest will be covered by the grant. So it's going to be awarded 25,000. So that's great news. Um, and we basically, I had to ask DIA if they would um, post date their invoices or what is it called? Not post, yeah, post date. So they've they've turned their invoices to be March first, so we can pay for them. And they're really for the grant. It doesn't matter when they've done the work; it's just when they yep. do the dating of the invoice. So they can have done the work before March first, but they just can't invoice us. And we have previously gotten congratulations. Them. Thank you, and thank you, Sandy Levine, for your Good job. Yes. yes, thank you, Sandy. Wherever you are. Um, so, um, so then we're waiting for. So Sarah had not Sarah. Sandy 
and uh, Dorinda and a handful of us were in the town hall and did like a whole like you know walk around and answered kind of all the um, questions that BIA had about space needs. Sandy submitted that to them. They need to talk to Sarah when Sarah returns. So they, they're not doing anything until Sarah gets back. Once Sarah gets back and can address some of their things with them, um, we'll have a, um, again, a smaller meeting of just committee people, not the whole board, and we will continue to um, update you on, on sort of the next step. So we are behind schedule, but it's okay because of this whole grant by a month Business. or so, or by at least a month, I would say yes. Um, so, um, but then you know, just thinking about um, the the money for the municipal, because this is something that we have to really be thinking about and moving on relatively quickly, which is getting this study done by BIA, applying for this funding to have walkthroughs, because you have to have that, even if. BIA has done their own walkthrough. We still can have one of these people be doing walkthroughs through our municipal buildings. Figuring out what we can pay for in this $500,000 grant that we can apply for up to $500,000, which is for energy upgrades and sort of the work associated to get to that you know, energy upgrade for your municipal building. So that could include the town hall, it can include the fire department and their heating system. It can include your town shed, right? Yeah. So, and my assumption would be we apply once, right? Like we have the big application that we're doing for this, um, for this grant. And, but it's gonna cost more than that to do whatever other things we may need to do for the town hall, which means that we'll have to, have educated our town on one, what we want to do with the town hall, and two, what funding is available and the time frame on that, because we may need to bond for some of this town hall as well, right? right. And so we have to get the town's approval, but we also want to apply for this money because it has to also be spent by 2026, which is not that far away. Um, so there's a lot of moving pieces and what we can't do is put this off. Like this is, we have to be moving, which we're doing now, but like, I'm not going to want to do this by myself, right? Like, I'm not going to want to be like, okay, it's time to apply for the grant. I mean, the energy committee has offered to, to help, but there's a lot of stuff that's coming down the pike that we need to be able to not be pushing down the road because this funding is one time, once in our lifetime when we kind of need it funding, right? Once in our lifetime and times in the board and in the middle sex. And it's a tremendous opportunity for our community it's huge. to do a lot of the stuff we've been talking about. Right. And, a lot of and know that about. they're also, we're all, we are also probably going to need more. We're, we know we're going to need more than 500,000 if we're really doing you know, a full renovation for the building, but a lot of that could be paid for because a lot of it's going to be doing these energy efficient things, right? So that's, the timing is going to be very, like we have to figure out how we get this all done and get buy-in from the town. We so, have, on top of that, uh, we also have to commit to the offer funds by the end of exactly yeah oh and i just Which brought up my, with that. yes right. thank you for saying that because i just brought up that spreadsheet and i wanted to ask you bridget did you give um money to the fire department for turnout gear uh radios handheld radios so that's not turnout gear what's turnout gear turnout gear. Yeah. okay we yeah. gave them seventy thousand for air pack Right. Okay, so we also budgeted in here twenty thousand for turnout gear, which was estimated to be thirteen to twenty k. Um, we also did four thousand for the owl system, which I don't know if you even paid for that out of ARPA yet. Um, no, we did not pay for it out of okay. ARPA, um, but it came in like I think half of that. Yeah. Okay. okay. It was a couple thousand at a time. Can yeah. you reimburse yourself with the ARPA money? I think we can. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I'll just put that in as two thousand. Um, but some of this we had before we knew about this five hundred thousand dollar grant, like thirty five thousand new heating system for the town garage, right? 
I don't know where that says that new heating 25k for the town garage. It was that, that's what you put down to Yeah, so you know, those are things that we might not have to spend ARPA money on, but that can be put into this this five hundred thousand. Is that business bank or these are no? This is just these aren't even allocated. These no, are no, the no, ideas. This this was just our yeah. uh, no no. I'm sorry. I should be more clear in my question. The five hundred thousand dollar grant list mm -hmm. is that 2026 deadline is that allocated or is it spent um, i think it's let me look again uh, that's a good question i in my head i had it as spent but it might be allocated it might just be allocated so um well that was the one yeah allocated makes more sense for 2026 yeah. well most of the ARPA money that i've been familiar with is that you've got to have it allocated yeah that it okay has um, to be spent that's been 20 where did i just read about it it was in an email that we got from the governor or something like that yeah, you don't have to answer that. Yeah, well, I you're it, right. Yeah, it, 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 I think 2026 makes more sense for allocated. It has to be allocated. I mean, there's no way. I mean, yeah, you couldn't get with all the people that are going to be doing this. You couldn't get the work done. You couldn't get the work done. It's that's a bunch of the conversations that I've been having. It's the buildings and stuff. grounds, right here. So, yeah. Some of it is is as money flow through those entities, they put a spend on it. Even though the federal requirements are that it's allocated, and that's right. their way of trying to push it along with the expectation that they're going to have some folks that are going to overrun, and they'll they'll give them an extension. But and I've had pretty open com communications with some folks about that. So yeah. And was this five hundred k? That's I mean that's like a that, there's what's the possibility of any of it getting rejected i mean it's is it done to you it's not i don't think they're really rejecting okay like people if you if you have a project they're going to fund it okay that, that, I, that's the understanding when i talked with eric he was very clear yeah. that they were encouraging people yes. to apply okay and this is saying implementation grants for weatherization thermal efficiency and supplementing replacing fossil fuel heating systems with more efficient renewable or electric versions and weatherization you know could be I mean, I don't know. I haven't looked into that. Again, there's a whole um, webinar that I'm scheduled to watch. Um, but, you know, could it be windows, right? I don't know. And that, so, I mean, perfect. those would That's be 100,000 right there in the building, right? But um, so I don't think, I, my guess is we wouldn't have trouble spending 500,000 each on three dying buildings, right? No. So, and it's just a matter of prioritizing. Right. So, um, the date for our existing ARPA. So, I have to file a report of what we've spent in the last year that has to be filed between April 1st and April 30th. And that's what we've spent to date. But then we have to allocate it by December of 24, I believe, and expend it by 26. Yeah, we've still got time before time goes by pretty fast. Yeah. Right. I mean, it really is it really is just amazing to me when I think over the years how we've struggled to find money for projects like what we're talking about tonight, whether it's a truck that we really would prefer not to have to buy or a new heating system for the for the fire department, which I'm considering to be a new heating system compared to what we've, what we've got in our other buildings, and it's already defined. Anyway. We really have an opportunity to dramatically upgrade our our town uh, our town infrastructure, and uh, I don't know if we can if we can make it work this time. But it would be just an unbelievable thing if we could somehow get grant money and create a water system for the village. I mean, that would be amazing. Sure. Well, we could send we could send it to every select board member's house. Maybe. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean that sincerely. I don't mean to sound, sound facetious. I mean, when all this money is flowing, we need to be on top of it and be deliberate and make sure we get our share of it because somebody's going to spend this money. Yeah, right. I just have another comment, but to Steve's point earlier, just being aware that, that some of this money is out there, you know, talking with folks that are in those worlds, 
you know, uh, just, hey, have you heard of anything new? I, I, it's huge. I, I mostly know about the grant stuff just from like the politics that I follow, but a lot of the job sites that I've been on, you would be, if you heard some of the conversations like at some of the hospitals across the state, you'd be absolutely floored with how much money they throw out the door intentionally just so their budget doesn't get decreased the following quarter. And it's all federal grant money. Right. And, you know, and the, those opportunities come up every year for small towns and especially after the infrastructure uh, bill that they passed of $900 billion, the majority of that bill was to restructure all of our small rural towns. I mean, that's why they include things like the fair internet access grant. And it's literally just to a grant you can apply as a small rural town to get connectivity to the internet for your your citizens that don't have it, you right. know? So like, I know like CV fiber has been a topic for the board a couple of times. So like that, there's grant money there that could pay for that instead of taxpayers, you know? The other, the other like, an initial comment was uh, there's the list that you've got going for the um, potential ARPA spends. Um, did you update that with any of the uh, things that we made adjustments through budget in time with like the gravel budget that we had um, about making? No, but I was just going to ask that because we have something in here, but it says the Build Back Better funds. Um, yeah. Have, we, have we gotten anything about Build Back Better yet? So it is a, it's a rolling budget annually. So uh, I think the latest deadline was like back in January, mm -hmm. but that was for the money getting allocated this year for last year's deadlines. Um, they haven't actually put out a schedule for, of application for the fiscal okay. year 2024 yet. But that's like for the run, like for mud mitigation. But no, I did. I have a placekeeper for 300,000 a year for that. And that's not, we had said 50,000. No, that was right. It was a $100,000 budget when we first got there. Well, I mean, they we tailored it back. We included half in the, in yeah. the regular. So budget. that is not even in here. Okay. So I'll put that's 50,000. Okay. Was it 50,000 exactly? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it changed from 100 to 80 to 50 is what we included in the regular budget. Okay, yeah. So, because I still have 300 for mud mitigation, but that I think is Build Back Better funds. Yeah, yeah the Build Back Better stuff, they don't have the fiscal okay. year 2024 out yet, but I wanted to make sure that we were aware that those are federal grants with potentially tens of millions of dollars that we would qualify to apply for as a, as a rural town. And so that could help alleviate you know, any number of issues that we have at a, as a town. Um, I don't know if there's, you know, mm -hmm. help needed on that. Like I'd be willing to spend however many hours I need to on my laptop. You can ask Sam, she's well aware that I like staring <laughs> at, at the screen. So, I, I, yeah, I welcome the, he wants to climb ladders. He wants to <laughs> spend time on his laptop. I, I love work. Welcome the, the participation, Steve. And I totally appreciate you looking at it afterwards. I give you my contact information yeah. and whatever, whatever you guys need. Right. So, right now, just so you guys have an idea, we were awarded 515000 in ARPA money and we have committed 200 and nearly 223,000, which leaves us about 292,000 that we haven't committed, but that we have a wish list that exceeds <laughs> that. Yeah, it was three times the amount yeah. awarded. Our, the remaining wish list after committed was 472,000. Our wish list is almost 700,000. So, oh, and I should actually put in that we committed a few thousand hours too. Yeah, it was a thousand. It was under, far under what we were. And she's doing a good job, too. Yes, she is. So 225 we've committed. So we have it just under 290 left. So where did you get the hour? Online, Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, does it have to be a certain member to apply for grants for the town? So would it have to go through the budget or the select board to apply for grants? Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, there's a whole grant portal. We have grant, like, users. I mean, anyone who wants to, you know, if there, if we had a, somebody who said, oh, I want to help you write this grant, you know, we would work with someone, and then we would submit it through the town. Because um, I'd be willing to help, too. 
I yeah, mean, there, there's a lot of the research, but yeah, there's a lot of. I mean, we're going to need a lot need, of help. We're going to need help. It's down close, the road. It's I mean, we're going to need before. help for sure. It's it's great an opportunity if there's a lot of time and attention that needs to be paid right. for it. So that's why as, I a, as a board, we're going to have to be <laughs> involved. Yeah. Right. He's like, I, oh, it's just time. This Liz is here at nine thirty. It's time for my lunch because he's been there since five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Not we, we work with the balls. 9 30 is the second. I have no problem. I don't care. I know all kinds of things. Okay, guys, we have, we have, we have uh, spent our time productively tonight. I appreciate all of your participation. Then I'm going to have to want to write it again. <laughs> and I, uh, I, will, I, I put a note on my calendar to call the town attorney tomorrow, which I will do. Okay, thank you. Oh, you know what? Yeah, sorry, guys. I'm going to throw it